games for us. So um, it's if, you know if it's not the best, it's definitely one of the uh, few um, best because he was he was great at, at both ends. You know his defense was excellent. I thought he was patient offensively. Um, who got us into uh, our offense well. And, um, he just set the tone. He just carried us. You know it. You know it. Uh, yeah, that was a great start. You know, Draymond um, was feeling good uh, right from the beginning of the game. And I don't think I've ever seen I think he had 13 points in the first five or six minutes of the game. By the first time out, he had 13, which was uh, crazy. But Draymond's amazing. Um, such a competitor, such an incredible defensive player. And um, those shots were huge for us. They just helped us get off to a really good start. Was there like a mini heart attack when you let the third one fly? Oh, no. He was hot at that point. You know, let it fly. You got, I don't mean to remind you of your road record or anything like that, but um, I think it, this was five straight road losses heading into today. Did today feel like a must win kind of just because of Steph not Andrew still being out? And, Else to check up. I, I just, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't like the term "must win" until you have three losses in a playoff series. You know, then that's that's what a must win is. Um, uh, where we are right now, we're, um, we're we're climbing out of an early season um, struggle. Uh, we've gotten better over recent weeks. We just haven't been able to uh, capitalize on the road. But uh, tonight was a great effort and. Um, I, as I said before the game, I, I really like this team. I think we have a chance to be really good. Um, and the fact that we're having to climb out of the hole and f find ourselves, figure out our identity, guys are having to find roles, that's actually really um, rewarding. Um, sometimes these are the best kind of seasons where you, you got to figure it out collectively. And the guys have, have such a great attitude, such a great approach, and they're fighting, and um, it's nice to be rewarded. Was there anything that jumped out to you? Obviously, you guys shot the three ball incredibly well in this game, but like in terms of the slips that you guys got and all the stuff going to the rim, was there anything in particular where you thought just like pacing or like something that you guys were doing that allowed you to hammer that stuff and just completely unwind that rapid? No, I mean, I, I think, you know, when anytime you're making threes, like we were tonight, um, it opens up the game and, uh, you know, the defense has to come out. Um, you know, we had a slip, I think, for Jamichael. You know, as um, I think Coloco jumped out to guard Clay on a pin and pin in in the corner, and so you know, guys make a few threes, it changes the game, and and the defense has to respond to that, and they're more vulnerable to to slips and back cuts and stuff. Did, you, did that shift in the defense kind of benefit Jamal Green the most? I'm sorry. Did that kind of shift in the defense from having to extend out him or further kind of, you know. Help Jamichael Green most times. Yeah, you know, uh, Toronto switches everything. And um, so one of the thoughts going into the game was that Jamichael could, could play a big role because of his ability to stretch the floor uh, as a big. You know, starting Draymond and, and Loon together, um, you know, you don't have <clears throat> ideal spacing. Um, so for Draymond to go out there and knock down three threes and then Jamichael to come in, make a couple more, um, you know, getting five threes from our big guys it was a game changer. Steve, uh, you mentioned earlier how your own team is trying to kind of figure out their roles and identity and all that, and the Raptors are kind of in a similar spot. You know, they're on a five-game yeah. losing streak. Uh, it's sort of, what do you think is the key to being able to get out of those kind of funks? Uh, you know, is it uh, just looking big picture? Is it, you know, changing something over practice? How have you kind of found the place to get out of those? I, I think it's just you know, maintaining your uh, poise and, and equilibrium in a, uh, in a time where um, there's a lot of noise and, um, you, you know, especially in the modern life that we live, um, if, you know, in the NBA, if you're struggling, you're, you're going to take a lot of criticism and a lot of heat. What I like about our team, one of the reasons I really like this group is that we've, we've taken plenty of heat, uh, but our approach and our attitude has been great. Yesterday's practice was fantastic. Had a great film session. Guys were upbeat. We practiced. Guys are laughing. Uh, they're they're enjoying the process. They're enjoying the work. Enjoying each other. Um, I think that's what it takes. Is you know you, your culture um, has to sustain um, when you're when you're losing. And 
as long as you have that, uh, that means the guys have the right approach and things tend to go your way. Cool. Go ahead. Oh. Right. I'll go. Uh, you spoke a lot in 2019 about how much you like playing here in the crowd, and you know it was a great place to play. And today, uh, you know the crowd was a little bit quieter because obviously you know, there was a there was a big lead on your half. Uh, how tough is it to play here when when there's that big crowd? And do you notice a difference as a coach of the, the crowd noise or anything like that, or do you, you know? Well, I think the, the, the way uh, that I always feel coming in here is that people love basketball. Um, and you, you, there's a buzz in the crowd before the game even starts. And uh, there's a handful of arenas that really stand out in that regard where you can feel the, you know, the juice, the energy before the game from the fans. And on top of that, it's, just, it's a great building. It's a great venue. Um, so it's. I always just enjoy uh, coming in here and experiencing uh, the game and the crowd. Cool. Um, uh, yeah, my, my my question is not uh, uh, related with uh, with the game. If you allow me. Um, yeah, Clay Thompson said uh, two months ago that uh, that the Barça Guardiola was inspiring for 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 you for your success in the last years. Um, my, my question is, but uh, well, the the team in today is uh, in reconstruction, Barça, but. My, my question if, uh, is uh, keep, uh, keep being uh, inspired for, for, for you, uh, the, the Barca. Is keep, is keep things what? No, if, uh, if uh, the, the game style of Barca keep, uh, keeps uh, being inspiring for, for your uh, game style, for, for your philosophy. I'm sorry. I... FC Barcelona, are they inspiring yeah. to your philosophy? Oh, oh, FC Barcelona, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, years ago I showed, um, I showed our guys some... Um, some some highlights of tiki taka football and uh, the importance of possession and and uh, making simple plays but controlling the ball and uh, and so I, I just think there are a lot of parallels to uh, in between uh, you know football and basketball soccer for Americans uh, but um, it, it's I think as a coach it's fun, it's kind of fun to give guys. Uh, metaphors and you know highlights of other sports and they tend to listen more they you know they get um, they get their fill of basketball every day so I think the guys liked it Clay brought it up you said uh, you know early in the season and uh, it's the way that we believe in in playing you know we had 31 assists tonight the ball moves uh, when the ball moves uh, everyone's engaged everyone plays better defense they, they run harder and so that's my it's uh, my feeling Steve, you talked before the game about how you guys sort of had issues to fix with or without Steph in the lineup. But this is your first win without him this season. Is there any kind of sort of monkey off your back? Uh, I know it was only five games, but to, to get a win without him, does that matter? I, I look at it more like this is the blueprint. You know, now we're, we're not going to be able to get 43 points from Jordan uh, every night. He was uh, spectacular. Um, but the way we played was how how we've got to play you know um defend with a purpose um we we held them to 22 free throws so we we actually won the free throw battle today uh which was huge the the uh the overall um game was um was how we need to play tough defense and then keep it simple on offense and just um, just get each other easy shots by making simple decisions rather than trying too hard and going in for, you know, wild attempts and uh, some of the things we've we've done early in the season. Steve, a quick follow-up. Uh, what other sports have you shown your team in the past? Showed them tennis. You know, I, I think um, one of the um, things about tennis is that, you know, you can tell if you watch tennis, you, you can tell who has control of the point by the kind of the depth of uh, the player. So if a guy is 10 feet behind the baseline and the other guy's Right on the on his baseline, you know who's controlling the point. And the analogy was, um, if you're pressuring the ball defensively and you got them starting their offense well beyond the three-point line, you're controlling the possession. And um, similar to a to a tennis match. That uh, the play where Draymond caught the lay on pass in the dunker spot, like tried to flip it to the corner and nobody was standing. <laughs> what was what was supposed to happen? Was Dante supposed to? Coming down to the corner? It, was, it wasn't a play. It was just, you know, we play a lot of, out of concepts, and I, he was just expecting uh, Dante to to, uh, to come out to the corner for a, a shot. Does that just speak to how kind of a lot of stuff you run? It's like bring react, obviously. Yeah, yeah. And he just, you know, he just anticipated that he would be there.
thinking about showing the guys croquet tomorrow. <laughs> All right, thanks. <laughs>